Welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY. In today's DIY video, must try now, Dollar Tree Spring Decor Ideas, new, easy, and budget-friendly DIYs. Hello, my Dollar Tree DIY-loving friends. If you are looking for a spring spruce up without spending a fortune, well, look no further. In today's video, I'll be showing you some upscale but easy spring home decor DIYs using mostly Dollar Tree supplies. These DIYs are just what the doctor ordered order to bust out of those winter blues. They are definitely a must try now. Warning, side effects may include increased compliments from your house guests and a sudden urge to redecorate everything in sight. So let's go DIY together. So stick around, let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. For this first DIY, I'm using these plastic balloon sticks from Dollar Tree, but I am not using them for balloons. They are kind of like extra strong plastic straws. And for today's purposes, we are measuring and cutting them into six inch long sticks. And it's actually, we're gonna need 12 of these six inch long sticks to be exact. Using some hot glue, I am going to begin by gluing together four sticks to make a square shape. And we're gonna do that two times so that we're going to end up with two squares. With two squares already made, we take the remaining four sticks and we hot glue one stick to each of the four corners of that first square. And I am doing my best to make those corner sticks stay relatively straight. I am also loading on that hot glue on those corners, and I'm basically loading on the hot glue wherever two sticks are attached. This is one of those rare times when I do not care about big gloppy hunks of hot glue because that hot glue is going to be incorporated into the overall design later. You will see what I mean then, but go wild with that hot glue, knock yourself out. And if it's not obvious to you at this point, yes, spoiler alert, we are making a three-dimensional square cube with these plastic sticks. So now all I have to do is hot glue the second square to the top of those four corner sticks. Again, just going hog wild with that hot glue, which I have to say is pretty liberating since it always seems like I'm trying so hard to hide the hot glue. Not here, my hot glue flag is flying high. <laughs> And here you can see I'm using even more hot glue to really reinforce those corners and to make my cube stay intact. Now, if you're thinking we're done with the hot glue, well, you'd be mistaken. I am using a generous amounts of hot glue to create a heavy, uneven texture across all of the sticks on each one and on all angles of those sticks. I want the entire cube to be thickly covered with a super textured mound of hot glue over each of those sticks. So yes, luckily hot glue is very inexpensive because I used a lot, I mean a lot, a lot, a lot of hot glue sticks for this project. I continuously turn the cube over and over so that I make sure I hit every angle on every stick with the hot glue. I am applying it in long lines, alternating thick and thin, and besides creating the texture I want with all this glue, it is also simultaneously making this cube really, really strong with virtually no chance of it coming apart. And as you can see, I now have this ultra texturized solid looking cube, which I will take outside to spray paint with this Rust-Oleum Bright Shiny Gold spray paint, which I will link in the description box below for you. Once my paint is dried, and I am loving the way this looks already because to me it looks like an artsy, freeform gold metal cube, but I want to take it a step further and I wanna make it look tarnished and a little bit antique. So I mix some Waverly clear wax with some folk art black chalk paint, both of which I will link for you below. I'm applying the black wax sparingly with a dry brush and then I use my gloved finger to rub and to wipe the black wax around so that it coats it kind of unevenly, really adding to that authentic tarnished metal look that I'm going for. 
You could definitely use some darker colored rub and buff to achieve this too, but I did not have any of that. So mixing the wax and the black paint just seemed like the best alternative. And I'm going to go over all the sides of the cube with this black wax mix. And this is DIY number one, my tarnished metal cube. The inspiration photo is right next to my version. Theirs is $240. Ours is about $1.75, give or take. And I'm going to be honest, I really like ours better than theirs. I think it has more character and more detail. And I think this is a very high-end decor item, perfect for displaying plants or any of your special upscale knickknacks. This is ultra sophisticated. For the next DIY, I'm using this plastic bowl and plastic cup, both of which come in sets of two or three for $3 at Family Dollar. I'm going to use some hot glue to attach the bottom of the bowl to the bottom of the cup. And if you are worried about long-term hold, you can also use some E6000 to attach the two pieces together. I'm going to spray paint the cup and the bowl using Rust-Oleum Paint and Primer in matte black. I have this silicone half round mold from Amazon, which I will link for you below. I am using the largest size of the half rounds and filling them with hot glue to create some large half round embellishments. The whole trick to using hot glue with these molds is to use plenty of glue and to make sure you really push the glue down into all those little nooks and crannies in the mold. I also like to give the mold a thud on my work table after filling it up to really force that glue down into the mold. I did break out the full-size glue gun for this because I made about 21 of these large half rounds and using the mini glue gun was really making my hand tired, not to mention how many times I had to change out that little mini glue stick. So do yourself a favor and use a large size glue gun to do this. I trim the glue strings and any extra glue on the edges of the half rounds with a scissors and then I like to use a piece of packing tape sticky side up to attach the glue embellishments to that for spray painting. It just keeps them together easier so they don't go flying around and I am going to paint the half rounds with this Rust-Oleum Bright Shiny Gold. Um, I will link that for you in the description box below. Once the 21 half rounds are dry, I wasn't sure I would need that many, but I do always like to have a few extra just in case. So once they're dry, I remove them from the tape and I kind of want to inspect them to see which ones are the better looking pieces so that I can be sure to use those pieces first. Once my matte black bowl is also dry, it is time to attach the half rounds and I have to apologize for this clip. I didn't realize that so much of the action was being cut out of frame at the top of the video. So I know that there are some parts that are hard to see, but hopefully the instruction can make up for that. I am using hot glue to attach the half rounds around the perimeter of the bowl, about a half an inch down from the lip of the bowl. And in an effort to space the half rounds out, Evenly, I usually start by gluing one piece on each of the four sides of the bowl and then proceed to space the rest of those half rounds out in between the four sides. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And in the end, out of the 21 half rounds that I had made, I use 16 of them to attach to the top of the bowl. And this is my modern matte black pedestal bowl. And I really like the sleek modern look of this bowl. It's simple and easy to do, but definitely adds an air of modern sophistication to your decor. And I'm always amazed at how easy it is to make those hot glue half rounds look so authentically metal like a total winner in my book. For this next DIY, it does not get any easier than this one, folks. This is going to be a pair but so simple, you can make them both in no time. The first piece uses this small glass candle holder from Dollar Tree and these large handful of these acrylic gems that I have an abundance of in my stash, but I will link something comparable in the description box below for you. I wanna dye these gems another color, so the easiest way to do this is with a couple of drops of alcohol ink. I'm using Tim Holtz alcohol ink in the color Citrus, which I will link for you below and all I'm doing is putting the gems in a plastic cup with a few drops of alcohol ink and mixing them around with a craft stick until all of those gems change color. Then I dump them out on a paper towel to dry. And because we used alcohol ink, they are only going to take a couple of minutes to fully dry. I did about three batches of the green gems. 
In the meantime, I decided to start with a bunch of plain undyed clear gems, and I am using this slightly different glass candle holder also from Dollar Tree. And all I'm gonna do is use some dabs of hot glue to attach the gems to the outside of the glass candle holder. I want the overall project to look like an open, raw kind of crystal candle holder. So I begin with applying the gems around the whole bottom of the candle holder and then make some random higher and some lower patterns on the side of the glass. I also build outwards with the gems to look like the crystals kind of jutting out from the glass into a free form kind of a pattern. There are no real rules with this one. You can go in any direction you want. You can use more gems. You can use less gems. Go higher. Go lower. Jut out more. Jut out less. It's whatever you want to do. Next, I'm going to be doing the same sort of thing with the green gems. I'm using the dabs of hot glue again, and I'm going along with what it, wherever this random kind of pattern wants to take me. But to begin with, I do want to make sure that the entire bottom perimeter of the glass is covered with the green gems. And that's just as a starting point. From there, it is a free for all. And I make a couple of upward patterns and random highs and lows here and there. Also, I create a section of crystal jutting out from the glass on the side. You can customize this with whatever kinds of patterns you like. And this is my pair of crystal candle holders. Considering how ridiculously easy this DIY was, I think the outcome is spectacular. I love the way the crystal looks and the glimmers it gives when a candle is lit inside it. I mean, no one would guess these gems are plastic. I especially love the green gems. That color is rich and impressive looking. It changes the whole mood of the project. This next DIY is a designer inspired decor piece based on the designer Jonathan Adler who does these modern kind of edgy pop artish uh, designs. I am using this lips silicone mold from Amazon. I will link it for you below and again we are using hot glue in the mold to make our embellishments and I thought I was going to use those foam hair curling rods from Dollar Tree in this project but I ditched that idea later in the video as well. I also thought I was going to use this glass container from my stash but it's a square container. I I thought I would use that, but I did change my mind later on and I go with a rounded fishbowl glass container from Dollar Tree. I made 20 total of these hot glue large sized lips and I use a scissors to cut off any of the strings and those unsightly bits on the lips after they have cooled and I remove them from the molds. And there's that rounded fishbowl from Dollar Tree I ended up using. And no, I still thought I'd use those foam hair rollers, but no, I ditched them later, I swear. I assembled the lips on a piece of packing tape, sticky side up for painting. I made 20 lips. I set them up to paint 14 of them white with Rust-Oleum paint and primer in white gloss, which I will link for you below. And I set up six lips to be painted with the Rust-Oleum bright shiny gold, along with those foam rollers in both colors that I do not use, but they also appear throughout this video clip, so I have to keep mentioning them. I also paint the outside of the fishbowl with the Rust-Oleum white gloss as well. And here's me throwing out all those foam rollers that I painted because I hated the way they looked. So I end up with 14 white lips and six gold. I'm using hot glue to attach the lips all around the fishbowl. There is no real pattern here, but we're using about three white lips to every pair of gold lips that we glue to the fishbowl. I truly, I do not have a pattern. I made the decision on the fly as to where to put the next pair of lips and which color they would be. This is really all up to you. It's your own discretion and whatever you think looks the best. And this is my inspired Jonathan Adler bowl. Theirs is $340, ours is less than two. And just a note, I did not make a stand for the bowl. It's actually just resting on a roll of gold tape, but I thought it looked good that way. I think the piece is really cool and a great conversation piece for a living room. Kind of edgy, kind of funky, but I love it. Okay, I didn't want to let this video go by without one Easter themed DIY, so here it is. I am starting with this large roll of nautical rope I got on Amazon, which I will link for you below, but you can also use the Dollar Tree larger nautical rope. I am using hot glue and I begin rolling the rope into a spiral shape and securing it with the hot glue. And once it gets to a coaster size, which is exactly what we are making, I stop and I cut the rope. 
I also use the hot glue underneath on the coaster bottom to help keep it together, but it also gives it some kind of like non-slip kind of a base underneath. I like to do that with all of my coasters. Then I repeat that process to make a second matching coaster. I have this huge roll of coated wire in my garage that I still don't know what it is supposed to be used for, but I know what I'm gonna use it for, and that's to make bunny ears. I cut four pieces of the wire and I cut them into two, I shaped them into two sets of bunny ears with ends that will bend under the side of the coasters so that my ears basically will be standing up in back of the coaster. Then I use some jute twine, which you can get at Dollar Tree or use the kind that I'm using here, which I will link for you below. And using some hot glue to secure it, I am going to wrap the wire on all four bunny ears with the jute twine so that no wire is showing at all when we're finished. I have this faux leather that's self-adhesive, which I will link for you below, but you can use the Dollar Tree faux leather for this if you can find it. I know I can't find it, maybe you can. So I measure the bunny ears against the back of the leather to see how much to cut, and then cut a couple of wide strips of the leather to use to cover my bunny ears. I'm cutting the leather to double width because it is self-adhesive, so I'm going to need to fold it in half so that I have the leather on both sides. If you use the Dollar Tree leather, you'll need to cut two pieces and glue them together back to back to make your leather double-sided. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And then I glue the backs of my bunny ears to the leather pieces and trim the leather off around the ears. I was not crazy about how the edge of the bunny ears looked after I cut that extra leather off. So I used some more jute twine and glued it over the edge of the cut leather around each of the bunny's ears to finish the look. Next, I glued the bent wire overlap on the bottom of the bunny ears under the coasters so that each coaster looked like it had a pair of bunny ears standing up behind it. My coasters need a little something to complete the look. So I grabbed four pieces of macrame cord, which I will link for you below, but really any lighter colored twine will do. And I made two of the most basic little bows that I could. And I have to admit that I am the world's worst bow maker. Challenge me, I dare you. No one is worse at this than me. I don't enjoy them, and frankly, it shows. My bows as a whole are simply uninspired. I know this. No need to point it out to me. I am well aware of my bow limitations. I will leave the bow making to all those fabulous bow making experts on YouTube. You win, I lose. And here are my very rustic Easter themed bunny ear coasters. Now, I am not one for all the pastel-y Easter themed stuff, so I just felt these rustic coasters were more my style. I love the combo of the leather and the rope, and my bows notwithstanding these coasters are kind of cute in that Easter way. As always, I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comments which one of these must-try Dollar Tree spring decor DIYs is your favorite and why. I really do love hearing from you. I want to thank you all for watching. Your support means so much to me, and I am thankful each and every day for all of you. And if you've enjoyed any of these spring home decor DIYs, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. I would love to have you here. Until next time, thanks for watching. My name is Sarah. I'm the medicated housewife, and crafting is my medication.